Good evening guys, welcome to another biology session. I hope uh, we are logged in. If you are logged in now, uh, make sure you let me know how the sound is and how the video is. Is everything clear on your side? Are you able to get me? So I want to find out before we can get started so that we are we can get on with our lesson this evening so hope we had a pleasant day so I know uh, today is Friday so let's try to do this uh, as uh, best as we can so that at least we can have uh, some rest as well uh -huh. let me know in the comment section are you able to get me Okay. Oh, Billings. Uh, good evening. Good to know. Loud and clear. That's good. Okay, Edward, you're here. Good evening to you too. Uh, very good. Good to see that you are nicely uh, logged in as well. Good to know. Okay, Rita, you're here. Good evening to you too. Uh, loud and clear. Very good. Okay. So let me know. Uh, let's see. We have five uh, so far in the stream. Uh, waiting for our five uh, members so that we go to 10 and then we can get uh, started eh? uh -huh. so just uh, waiting to actually see that our numbers increase before we can get started so this evening we are simply looking at uh, biology paper one for the year 2013 okay so just 2013 biology paper one is what we are looking at today okay so this is going to be another interesting paper uh, so it's good to know that we are moving according to our work, uh, work plan and we have uh, covered uh, so this will be our face uh, our fifth paper actually to cover this evening okay so then we'll move on to next week and cover some more all right okay kayumbi all right good evening to you good to see you logged in very good uh -huh. great to see you guys Hope you had a pleasant day. Uh, I was looking forward to seeing you guys uh, online as well. Uh, we can wait to actually see so that we will sit down and look at this paper. It's quite an uh, interesting paper as well. All right, John, very good, loud and clear, right to know. All right, okay, so we are at eight now, waiting for our two members before we can get started. At least I like to start when we're at least 10. Uh, it's always a good number to start from okay all right that's very good i know you guys were waiting quite some time and of course we'll get oh excellent we are now at number 10 so let's get into our question uh, paper all right so this is the paper we are looking at this evening so we have our biology paper one for the year 2013 okay so this is our question paper Let's move on to question number one now. We look at our first uh, question. Oh, yes. Okay. Question one. So question one says, the diagram below shows a plant uh, cell, uh, which is labeled A, B, C, and D. Then the question says, which labeled part controls the movement of substances in and out of who the cell line? Right? So is it uh, A, B, C, or D? Is it the cell wall, the cell membrane, the cytoplasm, or the tonoplast, which is the vacuum membrane? Yes, guys, which one is the correct answer? Which substance or which part is able to control the movement of substances in and out of the cell? Is it A? the cell the cell wall or is it uh, b which is our what is our b so our b is the cell membrane our c is cytoplasm and d is the tonoplast okay excellent job everyone guys yes the correct answer here is z b so the b is the one which will actually control the movement of substances in and out of the cell because the cell membrane is z selectively what is permeable so our correct answer is a b 
All right, moving on to question number two. Enzymes dash A work only inside living cells, or B are made up of lipids, C speed up chemical reactions, or D are not denatured by high temperatures. So, what is the property of enzymes? Is it A work only inside cells, or B are made of lipids, C speed up chemical reactions, or D are not denatured by high temperatures? okay so here the property of the enzyme is that enzymes will speed up chemical reactions excellent work so the correct answer for question number two is c very good okay so next question we have is question number three which of the following have who oh sorry which of the following cells have who cell walls okay so i want to know which of the following cells have who cell walls is it a Arthropoda, B, fungi, C, proctista, D, viruses. So, which of the following cells have who? So, which of the following cells with the cell walls? Okay. So, I think here the stepping I should have been have. Which of the following have who? cells with the cell walls? Okay, that's fine. Uh huh. So, which one do you think has a, a cell wall? So the cell which have cell walls are for kingdom fungi. So kingdom fungi will be bound with the, a cell wall. But the cell wall here will be made up of cheating and not cellulose. So fungi have a cell wall. So the correct answer here is B. Uh, excellent job. So make sure when you are commenting the answer, make sure you write the question number and the letter so that I know which answer you have chosen. Very good, guys. Okay. So next question we have is question number four and question number four says which of the following is the correct word equation for photosynthesis is it a carbohydrates react with oxygen in the presence of light energy and uh, chlorophyll to give water and carbon dioxide or b carbon dioxide sorry uh, carbohydrates react with water in the presence of light energy and chlorophyll to give oxygen and carbon dioxide or c Carbon dioxide reacts with water in the presence of light energy and chlorophyll to produce a carbohydrate plus a oxygen. Or D. Carbon dioxide reacts with oxygen in the presence of light energy and chlorophyll to give a carbohydrate and the water. So which is the correct equation for photosynthesis? Excellent job guys. Yes, the correct answer here is this C. It's a carbon dioxide reacts with the water in the presence of light energy and chlorophyll to produce the carbohydrate and the oxygen. That is the word equation for photosynthesis. Excellent job, guys. Okay. Uh, we can move on to question number five. So question number five says the diagram below shows the results of an experiment uh, measuring the rate of photosynthesis in a, a pond plant at different light intensities. So we have the rate of photosynthesis and light energy. So which of the following are the limiting factors in the experiment at point Z? So we had this question in one of the papers back. By this time, the limiting factor was Z, the answer for the last time this question was asked. Now this time they're asking us which one is the limiting factor. So at Z, is it carbon dioxide and temperature? Or B, light intensity and water? Or C, temperature and D, water, or D, water and carbon dioxide. So, which one is the correct answer for five? Yes, guys. Which one would be the correct answer? All right. So, very good. Yes. So, here the limiting factor is the carbon dioxide and the temperature so the correct answer here is the a so we are not affecting the amount of carbon dioxide and temperature so here we're only observing light intensity so these two factors end up becoming light what i mean limiting what factors so the correct answer there is the a okay so since the pond is already in water there's always too much water so the water won't act as a limiting factor because there's too much water for the pond eh? So the only factor here is carbon dioxide and what? Temperature. Okay, so the correct answer here is A. Okay. Uh, next question we have is question number six. 
so the table below shows uh, four different diets so we have diet a b c and d so carbohydrates vitamins proteins and the iron are the food there so here the key is nutrient available x is nutrient not available in diet so which diet would cause an individual to suffer from scavy and anemia okay so a where carbohydrates is present no vitamin c proteins are present no iron or b lack of carbohydrates present of vitamin c presence of proteins absence of iron or c presence of carbohydrates absence of vitamin c absence of proteins and the absence of sorry presence of iron then d carbohydrates vitamins are present protein is absent and iron is also absent iron. so which diet here would cause a person to suffer from scavy and the anemia okay so for question number six the correct answer here is a because this scavy is caused by lack of vitamin c and anemia lack of iron so that's why here we have a we are lacking vitamin c and we're also lacking what iron so that's why a is the correct what and sign so when you lack vitamin c and iron so scavy is lack of vitamin c and the anemia will be lack of what iron so that's why the correct answer here is a okay great job everyone okay so next question we have is uh question number seven okay very good guys so the diagram below shows the elementary canal and the associated structures so we have uh, part uh, one part two part three part four part five part six eh? so which number structures uh, produce uh, digestive enzymes okay so we have uh, one which is the salivary amine sorry the salivary gland we have the stomach we have the liver we have the pancreas we have uh, the jejunum uh yes the jejunum and we have the uh colon here okay so which number structures produce digestive enzyme is it a we have the salivary gland the stomach and the, the liver as well as the colon or b salivary gland stomach uh, pan pancreas and the, the small intestines or c we have the stomach the liver the pancreas and the, the small intestines or d we have the stomach the uh, pancreas we have five which is the small intestines and the six which is the colon okay so seven which one produces the digestive uh, enzymes so where do we produce enzymes okay so enzymes will be produced in the saliva uh, very good it will also be produced in the stomach the liver does not produce the enzymes because there are no enzymes in bowel then we're also going to have enzymes in the uh, pancreatic water juice right? then we're also going to have uh, enzymes from uh, intestinal juice so we also have from five so here the correct answer is uh, one two four five so the correct answer here is uh, b all right excellent job guys okay all right so i hope that is uh clear uh-huh okay all right where are we all right so i'm trying to move the mouse a bit okay let me just move as this one tries to to load okay all right let me just uh okay okay uh sombo uh sorry to hear to see that uh, the image is not being clear uh actually the i'm trying to make sure that the screen can fit on the slide so for some uh try maybe to move your phone into a uh, full full screen uh than you using the upright one i know maybe because you're still viewing the comments but uh, in case maybe it's braille you can go to the other form then it moves to the other one uh, Stumbeko, we are also having the same uh not clear okay on, on which question in particular were you not clear on okay 
all right so let me know in case uh, but i hope this question was clear on all your all your screens okay all right so next question we have is question number eight so question eight says what is the name and function of the tooth illustrated the below so we have our tooth here so name is it a canines and the function tearing off of flesh or b it's canines biting off and tearing of flesh or c incisors biting and cutting of food or d molar and crushing and grinding of food so what is the name and the, the function of this uh, tooth illustrated here yes guys now edward okay everything is clear that's good to know yes guys what's the correct answer for question number eight uh-huh excellent job the correct answer here is d this is a molar and its job is to crush and grind what food because it is flat and it has got cups out together and it has got two roots so this will tell you that the large and flat teeth are the molar sign so that is the correct answer moving on to question number nine during translocation in plants substance x is moved from organ y to organ z what is the substance x y organ z sorry organ y and z so a substance x is sucrose uh, organ y is the anther then e, organ z is the stigma or b or, uh, substance x is sucrose the organ is leaf and uh, the other organ z is the root or c we have water root leaf or we are moving water to the soil then to uh, hair yes guys so we're talking about translocation in plants which uh, substance are we moving during translocation question nine excellent job the quest the answer here is z d translocation will involve the transplant of sucrose from the leaf to the roots or any other storage water organ so that is the correct water and sign okay moving on to question number 10 i know this one will, might appear a bit uh, brady or smaller on your screens uh, so bear with me on the size okay so the so the here it says which diagram below shows the effect of increasing humidity on near the uh, uh, on the transpiration rate so we are increasing humidity on the transpiration rate of a plant then so when humidity increases the is transpiration reducing or transpiration increasing or c it will increase then reduce or d it will be increasing steadily so what will happen to the effect of humidity i mean the effect of transpiration when we are increasing humidity so when humidity becomes higher what will be the rate of transpiration question 10 which one do you think is the correct answer all right yes guys uh-huh throw it there in the comment section let's see what do we have mm -hmm. all right excellent job guys yes so remember when we, we are i was talking about uh, humidity even in the previous question we looked at yesterday i said that humidity is the only uh, factor where when you increase its factor the rate of transpiration will do it uh, reduce so increasing humidity reduces the transpiration so the correct answer here is what a so that is the correct answer so when you increase humidity transpiration will do what it reduce but other factors increase temperature humidity i mean transpiration increases more wind more transpiration uh more temperature more transpiration so that is how it is so only humidity is the one which works in opposite okay so don't forget uh, that unique part about uh, our uh, factors affecting transpiration all right moving on to question number 11 so we are done with our first uh, our first 10 i hope uh, so far everything is moving uh, okay uh, we have uh, uh, the screen is much clear and we are following nicely as we are observing okay okay so moving on to question number 11 so question 11 says the diagram below shows a section through the human heart okay so we have parts one two three four 
five, six, seven, eight times. So, which sequence shows the flow of deoxygenated blood D from the heart? Okay. So, how is the blood moving? Deoxygenated blood. Is it A? 1 to 2 to 3 to 4. So, it's moving in this manner. Okay. Or B? Is it 4, 3, 2, uh, 1? Where well, it's moving from 4 to 3 to 2 to 1. Or C? From 5 to 6 to 7 to 8. Or D? 8 to 7 to 6 to 5. So, how is the sequence of the flow of deoxygenated blood? Yes, guys. Very good. So here the flow of blood will actually move from one, it will move to two, pass through there, and then down there, then it will go to the lungs for oxidation. Eh? So that is how blood will flow. So the correct answer here is what? It is A. Now together. So our correct answer is A. Is it clear? Alright. So moving on to the next question. We have question number twelve. So question twelve says the diagram below. Uh, represents a blood capillary in the leg uh, with adjacent cells. Right? So arrows represent movement of substances between red blood cells, between blood and these cells. Okay, so we have almost a similar structure to yesterday where we are looking at the capillary bed. Right? So we have the capillary here, then we have one going into the red blood cell, we have two from red blood cell to the cell, then three from uh, the plasma, to the cell then the surrounding we have tissue fluid line so this is our one our two our three so which arrow represents glucose carbon dioxide and the oxygen so one a one is carbon dioxide two is the oxygen and three is the glucose okay or b carbon dioxide is one oxygen is three glucose is a two or c Carbon dioxide is a 2, oxygen is 1, and glucose is a 3. Or D, we have o, carbon dioxide 2, oxygen at 3, and D, glucose at a 1. So what is the correct answer? So the tissues will give, will, will produce carbon dioxide, which will go into the red blood cells altogether. So the tissues will be producing carbon what? Dioxide ion. Then they will be receiving oxygen from red blood cells and the glucose is carried in blood the plasma. So this one will be plasma. So yes, excellent job guys. The correct answer here is A. Carbon dioxide is 1, 2 is the oxygen and 3 is the glucose. Great job everyone. So that is the correct answer. Okay. Uh, next question we have is question number 13. Okay, so we have question 13 here. The diagram below shows a set up shows uh, sorry let me start again the diagram below was set up to demonstrate respiration in the plants okay so this is again a repetition of the question we had yesterday and the other year as well okay so we have again our air throwing through potassium hydroxide which is the soda line which is supposed to absorb carbon dioxide then the next it passes through line water to detect carbon dioxide then we have the potted plant then we have uh, lime water to detect carbon dioxide again. Then it uh, passes to a filter pump, which is our respiratory. Okay. So which changes would occur to the flask 1 and flask 2 after 2 hours of the experiment? Okay. So here, flask 1, here remains colorless. Flask 2 remains uh, colorless. Or B, Plus one remains colorless, plus two tends mucky, or C plus one tend mucky, plus two tend the mucky as well. Or D plus one tend mucky, plus two remain the, the same. So where which one is going to indicate the, the presence or absence of carbon dioxide? Okay. Yes, guys, very good. Uh-huh. So 13. Okay. So what will happen is that since here the air will first pass through potassium hydroxide, this one will absorb carbon water dioxide. So carbon dioxide is going to be absent, so flask 1 will remain colorless since there is no carbon water dioxide. Right? Then once it goes into the plant, here oxygen will be used up and the plant will produce the carbon water dioxide. So the carbon dioxide will then pass through flask 2 which will turn water mucky. 
So that's why here the answer is Z, B. Plus 1 remain colorless. Plus 2 turned what? Gnocchi. Great job, everyone. So the correct answer here is Z, uh, B. Okay. Next question we have is uh, question number 14. So the table below shows the percentage of a gas in inspired and expired air in humans. So inspired air, we have 20%. Expired air, we have 16%. So what gas is it being referred to? So which gas is this one? When inspired air, we have 20% and expired, we have 16 Is it A, carbon dioxide, B, nitrogen, C, oxygen, or D, water vapor? Yes, guys, what is the correct answer? Okay. Okay, Faith, that's why we are here revising so that you cannot miss out on the question. So stay tuned to the channel and lay more. You won't be able to miss anything. Uh -huh. Excellent job, guys. The correct answer here is C. So oxygen is the gas being referred to. So in inspired air, we have 20 to 21%. But when we breathe out, we only have 16% of oxygen. Because 4% of the oxygen will be absorbed by the red blood cells to be carried to our body cells. Okay, excellent job. Very good. All right. Next question we have is question number 15. Which of the following events occur during inspiration in a fish? So the, for the fish to breathe in, what is taking place? We have the flow of the mouth, operculum, and the movement of water. So here the fish is breathing in a so a the flow of the mouth will lower the operculum will close the knee water enters or b the flow of the mouth lowers operculum open and the water comes out or c the flow of the mouth is raised operculum closed water enters or d flow of the mouth is raised operculum opened and the water comes out time so what is the correct sequence which occurs for a free fish to breathe in Yes, guys. Oh, excellent job. Yes, the correct answer here is Z, A. Great job, everyone. So for the fish to breathe in, the flow of the mouth will lower. That will increase the volume of the mouth. And the operculum will end up closing in. So since the flow of the mouth opened, the volume had increased. Uh, water pressure will reduce in the mouth. So water will enter. And that is how breathing of inspiration in the fish will take what place. So the correct answer here is Z15. Great job, guys. Okay, so the correct answer here is Z AI. Okay, so next question we have is uh, 16. The diagram below shows germinating seedlings. We have the sunflower, we have the maize, we have the broad beans. So what type of germination are illustrated? So here we have maize. We have the sunflower and the broad beans. Eh? So for the maize, A, epigel, sunflower, hypogel, broad beans, epigel. Or B, epigel, maize, epigel, uh, sunflower, hypogel, uh, broad beans. Or C, maize has hypogel, sunflower has epigel, and the broad beans has the hypogel. Or D, hypogel. In maize, hypogel in sunflower, and the epigel in broad beans. So, which type of germination are we talking about in 16? Okay, so don't forget, guys, when we are leaving the answer, make sure you write the question number as well as the answer following so that I know which uh, option you are writing there. So, here we look at the cotyledon where it is. Is it below the ground or is it above? So, if it's above the ground, that is epigel. If it's below, it's hypogel. Right? So, sunflower, this is above the ground. So, this is the epi. Maize, it's below the ground. So, this is the hypo. Okay. Broad beans, is also below the ground. So, this is the hypo. All together. So, mean that here, maize, we have uh, what is hypogel, sunflower, epigel. So, the correct answer here is what? C. Excellent job, guys. That is the correct answer. Very good. I guess we now know our germination types. Eh? Don't forget epigel and the hypogel germination. 
Okay. Next question, we move on to question number 17. The diagram below shows the life cycle of a mosquito. So we have adult, then one, eggs, two, larva, three, pupa, four, adult. So which stage transmits pathogens? Is it A, adult, B, eggs, C, larva, D, pupa? Yes, guys? Uh huh. 17. Which stage of the life cycle will transmit pathogens? Uh huh. Excellent job, guys. Yes, adults are the ones which are able to transmit what pathogens because adults will go and lay eggs in decomposing organic matter or human water waste time where they'll pick up the bacteria and then fly over and reach uncovered water food. So that is the correct answer. Okay. Uh, next question we have is question 18 and question 18 says during a long distance race the body temperature of the athlete begins to rise eh? so which of the following changes occurs in the body to help uh, retain the body back to normal now together so the body temperature is risen eh? and we want to retain it back to normal so we have sweating and blood vessels in the skin so what will happen to these, these structures so oh so a sweating increases blood vessels constrict or b sweating increases blood vessels dilate or c sweating decreases and we have uh, blood vessels dilating or d sweating decreases and blood vessels uh, constrict okay which one do you think is the correct answer for 18 okay very good yes so when the body temperature rises sweating is going to increase and you are going to see the athlete as they run sweat will be coming down their vessels there apart from that you are going to see their veins are going to show more so mean that dilation will take what place so that their veins are able to lose more blood by, i mean lose more heat by convection and conduction so the correct answer here is a b excellent job guys okay so that is the correct answer for question 18 okay all right so next question we have is question 19 what is the level of urea in the blood leaving the liver and the urine? Okay, so let me just repeat this. What is the level of urea in blood leaving the liver and in urine leaving the kidneys? Okay, so we have blood leaving the liver and blood leaving the kidneys after a person has a high protein intake. So level of urea in blood leaving the liver and level of urine uh, sorry level of urea in the urine leaving the kidneys okay so here leaving the liver a high kidneys low uh, b to be high kidneys low uh, c liver low kidneys high or d uh, liver is low and the kidneys is high okay so how be the the levels of proteins i mean the levels of urea in blood just leaving the liver and that one leaving the kidneys eh? okay so the blood which will be leaving the liver since the person has taken in a lot of protein they will produce more amino acids and excess amino acids will be deaminated by the liver so mean that the liver will have a high level of urea eh? now the function of the kidneys is to remove urea so when the blood leaves the urea it's low in what urea so meaning that here the correct answer here is Z A. You are going to have a high concentration of urea in blood leaving the liver and a low concentration of urea in blood leaving the what? The kidneys. So 19, the correct answer is Z A. Alright. Great job, guys. Excellent work there. Alright. Next question we have is question number 20. Where in the plant is oxygen? Uh, sorry, where in the plant is oxygen made? and uh, what is the effect on uh, plants okay all right so here where it's made and the effect so a leaves promotes cell elongation b root tip promotes cell elongation c root tip promotes uh, leaf enlargement d stem promotes secondary growth so question 20 which one is the correct uh, answer yes guys where do we make oxygen 
and what is the effect of auxin? Uh -huh. Yes, looking forward to your answers. Really enjoying the energy in the comment sections. Uh, you guys are really uh, participating fully. Please keep it up. Really, really looking forward to your answers. All right, very good. Yes. So, what actually happens? So, the function, so where auxin is made is actually the root tips altogether. So, it's actually made at the root tip or the shoot tip. So, any of the two. But the function of auxin is that it actually promotes cell what elongation altogether. So mean that here our correct answer here is Z, B, not for leaf enlargement but T cell elongation. So it actually makes cells longer. So that's why we say it promotes what growth. Fine. So unfortunately, it's not secondary growth because secondary growth is done by the cambia mine. So here uh, we had the leaf enlargement, so you have to be careful on this one. So that's why I see. Oh, yes, it's the root tip, but unfortunately, we don't use it for leaf enlargement time. Okay. So, next question we have is question number 21. Uh, 21 says, which of, the, which of these plant uh, responses are tropic response? So, which one are tropic? Okay. So, A, a leaf of uh, the Venus fry trap catches a fly that walks on it. Or D, daisies open in the morning and close as the sun sets or c the shoot of an indoor plant grows in the direction of the window or d the tendril of a vine twists around the a uh, support so where you find for example beans growing around the a uh, stem or a maize plant which you planted close to it so which one is phototropic is it the venus stride trap or the daisies or a plant inside the house growing towards a window or d tendrils going around the a support time so 21 which one is the correct answer oh yeah very good yes the correct answer here is c the shoot of an indoor plant growing towards the direction of the window because that is where light is coming from mine so here for b don't be fooled by the daisies the daisies are responding to helio Tropism, simply the temperature of the day. So that's why they normally move with the movement of the sun. Right? So that is what is known as the heliotropism. So that is where they close and they open. So the correct one here is this C. Okay. So next question we have is question 22. I hope we can uh, see uh, every part of the question. Let me just see if I'm obscuring any part. Okay. Let me just check if uh, the video might be covering some part of the question okay almost there so we are at uh, question 22 now okay all right so i'm abstracting some parts okay let me turn off the video all right there we go okay so the diagram below shows two neurons we have neuron x and the neuron y what are the functions of these two neurons so neuron x neuron y a transmit impulses away from the central nervous system uh, then we have uh, transmit impulses towards the central nervous system for function of y b x transmit impulses from the central nervous system then e, y transmit impulses away from the central nervous system or c transmit impulses within the central nervous system or y transmit impulses away from the central nervous system then d x transmit impulses away from the central nervous system then e uh, y transmit impulses within the central nervous system so which one is the correct response or correct functions of these two neurons so the first thing you have to do is to identify the mind i hope we have identified these uh, correctly so these two neurons uh this one is simply the x is the uh sensory okay so it's sensory then y is what the motor okay so the function of the sensory neuron is to carry impulse from the receptor to the central nervous system mine. so this one will come from the receptor to the central nervous system mine. The function of the motor is to carry from the central nervous system to the effector. That is where the information will move to. Okay. 
so what is the correct answer now here so we are saying x carries information to the nervous what system so this one transmits impulses to the central nervous what system then the motor neuron transmits impulses away from the central nervous system so what is the correct answer the correct answer here is b excellent time so this one carries to the central nervous system this one away away from this one to one time so that is the correct answer okay moving on to question number 23 now okay let me just bring back the video here mm -hmm. okay all right so we are now at question number 23 so question 23 says the diagram below shows the uh, human brain seen from the uh, rear side okay so we have parts uh, x and uh, y so the parts labeled x and y are what are these parts so here we are saying x is the cerebrum y is the medulla oblongata or b x is the hypothalamus y is the cerebrum or c x is the medulla oblongata and d y is the cerebrum or d x is the pituitary gland and d y is the hypothalamus so which part is it okay very good yes so x is actually the medulla oblongata and the y this is the cerebrum okay so the correct answer here is this c great job everyone guys uh -huh. excellent job very good yes that is the correct answer so x is the medulla oblongata and the y is the cerebrum okay that was a very good question okay so we all got that one correct next one we have is question number 24 the diagram below shows a human eye section okay labeled uh, p and q okay so what happens to the ciliary muscles at p and the q when the eye focuses a near object in a dim white light okay so here we are looking at the secular muscles okay secular muscles eh? uh -huh. all right so we are in dim white light time eh? so in dim light what happens so the secular muscles a eh, will contract the knee the q which is the ciliary muscle it will relax or b it will uh, contract and q will also contract or c relax and q contract or d relax and d relax okay yes guys which one do you think is the correct answer for question number 24 so here the first thing we start with is dim light time so in dim light you want to make the people look uh, brighter so to make your pupil look brighter what actually happens is that the secular muscles are going to relax so that they can be pulled apart so here the secular muscles will do what will contract time eh? then when you're looking at a near object the ciliary muscle is going to contract so that's why i find that for example when you are reading you easily get tired your eyes will be tired because the ciliary muscle is working it's contracting but when you are watching tv which is far from you the muscle is what relax that's why you can watch tv for a long one time so here the correct answer here is this c uh, p o relax so that uh, the muscles can be pulled away to make the pupil dilate and the q the muscle will do what contract so the correct answer for 24 is actually ci all right very good work guys that is the correct answer all right moving on to question 25 the bones of the arms and legs form what do they form is it a appendicular skeleton b axial skeleton or c compact bone system or d spongy bone system yes guys uh-huh the bones of the arm and legs which are they forming is it the appendicular skeleton or the axial skeleton or c the compact bone system or d the spongy bone system I yes guys which one is the correct answer yes excellent the correct answer here is z a the arms and legs form what is known as the appendicular skeleton which is found on the side eye 
the axial skeleton is at the center that is made up of the skull spinal cord and the rib cage as well as the, the stenamine so that is the correct answer our correct answer here is the, uh, a appendicular skeleton okay so i hope we are still able to see the questions they are nice and clear okay we move on to question number 26 the diagram below shows uh, three bones from the arm of the human being uh -huh. so i think this question again if you look at these bones we looked at it yesterday again eh? so between which labeled parts is the bow and socket joint formed now the, our previous question yesterday was asking for the hinge joint now we are asking for the bow and socket what eh? joint so where are we going to form it we have the scapula here we have the humerus and we have the radius and the ulna. Then we have one, three, also one, two, three, four, five. So it's between one and three, B, one and five, or C, two and five, or D, three and D, four. Yes, guys, question number 26. What is the correct answer? Excellent job, yes. The correct answer here is Z, A, I. So the correct answer is so between one, which is the granoid cavity, and the head of the humerus. So that is the one which fits in your shoulder there. So that is where you find the, our bow and socket joint. So here, the head of the humerus forms the bow, and the granoid cavity of the scapula forms the socket. So that is where we form our bow and socket what? Joint. That is the correct answer. Okay. Moving on to question number 27. The diagram below shows the two stages in lifting weight. So we have stage one and stage two. Okay. So what happens to the structure of the muscles in moving from stage one to stage two altogether? So we have A, biceps contract, triceps relax. Then elbow joint move in one place. Okay. Then B, biceps contract triceps relax then elbow joint rotate then c biceps relax triceps contract joint moves in one place or d biceps contract triceps relax and the joint rotates so how are we able to move our arm there so we can even practice there as you answer in the question so that you can know what is happening to your muscles okay Yes, question 27, what's the correct answer? So, very good. Yes, uh, the correct answer here for 27 is actually A. So, the biceps are going to contract. That's why this part becomes uh, more bigger or this one feels smaller because this one has a contracted eye. Then the joint only moves in one place. It's not rotating like your arm there. It's only moving in one plane moving 180 degrees so the correct answer is a biceps contract and the triceps relax and the elbow joint moves in only one plane excellent job guys that is the correct answer okay next question we have is question number 28 so question 28 says the diagram below shows an underground stem okay so it says the underground stem what is the name of this underground stem is it uh, A, comb, B, tuber, C, rhizome, D, run? 28. Uh -huh. Yes, guys. What's the correct answer for question 28? We have an underground stem here. Okay. Yes, guys. What is the name of this underground D stem? Is it A, comb, B, tuber? C rhizome D run. Okay. Alright. So here for question 28, the correct answer here is Z A. It's actually a comb. So a comb actually as uh, resembles a onion bulb. So the onion bulb and the the comb all have more like a similar structure. So they create that bulb structure. So that is what is known as a comb. So the only difference is that the bulb. It's the leaves which make here the bow by which makes that covering. But for the comb, it's the stem which makes that round bulginess. So that is what is known as a comb. Eye. So unfortunately, this is not a tuber. So tubers actually come from a stolon. 
so we have a stolen then we create a tuber at the end all together then it is held to the stem so that is normally what happens uh, this will be the roots down here okay so that is what is now known as a tuber okay then uh, so that is the correct answer for question number 28 so moving on to question number 29 now the diagram below shows a flower of grass species the flower is pollinated by so which type of pollination what agent of pollination do we work with here is it a birds b insects c water d wind question 29 yes guys uh-huh the, the flower is pollinated by which type is it uh, beds insects wind or water or wind so when you look at this type of uh, the flower when you look at the stigma this is a feathery stigma so the feathery stigma is found in the wind pollinated flowers so the correct answer here is the di so that is the nature of wind pollinated flowers they always have a feathery stigma very large anthers and the very long filaments which are pendulous so those are the adaptations of a wind pollinated flower so that is the correct answer great job guys very good eh? okay so next question is question 30 so we're only remaining with 10 more questions let's hope you get all these last 10 now correct time eh? uh-huh so we are now in the last uh, 10 uh, let's move on now so the diagram below shows the male reproductive system in humans uh, labeled one two three where are sperms produced and where are they stored eh? so we have the one the urethra uh two uh we have the epididymis and the we have uh, three which is the test design okay so where are the sperms produced and where are they stored so produced a produced in the one stored in two uh b produced in two stored in a three or c produced in a two stored in e4 ah, we had part four. Oh, so obviously maybe it was not labeled okay then e, uh, d we had d3 then stored in e4 uh, so here there was a bit of uh, a typing error okay so where are we producing and where are we storing okay so we can see the query answer is already has a problem okay question 30 okay so question 30 the correct answer here is z b i okay so here since uh, this is close to three and two so this is where we are producing and storing so we are producing so here obviously the labeling was not clear okay so this is where we normally find the, the production so i don't know if there was any other label which was given but this is where we are going to find our production and storage so production will occur in the testes and this storage will occur in the epididymis okay so that one will be the correct answer very good guys well done okay so next question we have is question 31 the diagram below represents the menstrual cycle of a human female during the month of july okay menstruation occurred from uh, fourth, uh, fourth to ninth july so from mu fourth to ninth this is where we had the menstruation eye which is the shedding of the walls of the uterus sign so what was uh, the likely day for ovulation okay so is it a fourth july right here okay this is a b ninth july okay this is where we have b or c 18th july here or d 28th this is where we have our d okay yes guys so where do you think uh ovulation will take place where the exhale is going to be released is it at four at day nine at day 18 or day 28 mm -hmm. uh -huh. excellent guys yes the ovary will be released at the day 18 which is the c so this is done at the day 14 of the menstrual what is so if you count from where the menstrual cycle starts that's where menstruation starts right? So it will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And this is where we have our middle day. 
So that is where ovulation will take place. This is where we are going to release the egg water cell. So the correct answer here is what? C. Okay, so don't forget when you come to the menstrual cycle, well, the midday in the menstrual cycle, that is where ovulation will take place. Eh? Moving on to question 32. Which of the following birth control methods is hormonal? Oh, so where do we find hormones? So A, condom, B, contraceptive pill, C, intrauterine device or IUD, then D, uh, tubular ligation. Yes, guys, which one will contain the hormonal method? 32, which one do you think is the correct answer? Yes, guys, 32. Excellent job, yes. So, 32, the correct answer here is B. It's contraceptive pills which contain artificial water hormones. Eh? So, it will contain progesterone, which will mimic uh, the female body to think that it's pregnant so that no egg cells are released. Eh? So, that one is the hormonal method, and that is the contraceptive pill. Okay, very good, guys. Great job. Okay, great, great job. Well done, guys. Okay. Next question we have is question uh, 33. 33 says, which two diseases are transmitted through contaminated water? Okay, so where are we going to have uh, contaminated water? In? So is it A, malaria and biohazia, B, malaria and tuberculosis, or C, corella and tuberculosis, or D, corella and D, biohazia? So, where are we going to have these diseases transmitted by contaminated water? Is it uh, malaria and biohazia or malaria and tuberculosis or corella and the tuberculosis or corella and the biohazia? So, question is simply asking us to say which are waterborne diseases. If you remember that, uh, that saying in primary school, say, say ah, waterborne diseases, which one are they? All right, excellent job, yes. The, this one will be cholera and the biohazia. These are the waterborne diseases. They are transmitted by contaminated what? water. So that is the correct answer. Great job, guys. Excellent work. Very good. Okay. So next question we have is question number 34. So 34 says, what does the, what does the human produce when live vaccines of measles are injected into it? Okay, so what does the body produce? A, antigens, B, antibodies, C, antibiotics, D, antiseptics. 34, which one do you, so what do, does the human body produce when live vaccines of measles are injected into it? Is it producing antigens or antibodies or uh, antibiotics or antiseptics? Okay. Very good, excellent job. Yes, the body will actually be producing antibodies altogether. So, antigens are found on the surface of the cells. Antibiotics are chemicals which we take to kill bacteria. Antiseptics are also liquids which are used to uh, wash down, for example, dental. That is an antiseptic eh? to kill bacteria. So, the correct answer here is what? B. The body produces eh? antibodies. Great job, guys. Very good work. All right excellent okay next we have question 35 the diagram below shows a food chain okay which organism in the food chain are autotrophic so which ones in the food chain are autotrophic is it a grass wheat and dandelion or b field mouse dandelion and grass or c uh, we have uh, rabbit, grass, and the uh, field mouse, or D, wheat, dandelion, and the uh, field mouse. 35. Which ones are autotrophic? Question 35. So we have a food chain here, and the question is asking us to say which organisms are autotrophic. Yes, guys. Mm -hmm. 35. Yes, guys. Okay. So, you have to know what the word autotrophic means. So, autotrophic means that organisms can produce their own water, food. Eh? And the plants, organisms can produce their own food by using either light or chemicals. So, we have photosynthesis or chemosynthesis. So, here we have photosynthesis because we have plants, meaning that here grass is a plant, dandelion is also a plant, wheat is also a what? A plant. So, here the correct answer is A. 
So grass, wheat, and dandelions are autotrophic because they carry out photosynthesis. They'll produce their own food by the process of photosynthesis sign. So that's why that one is the correct word and sign. Excellent job, guys. Very good. Okay. Moving on to question number 36 now. Which of the following... So which of the processes in the nitrogen circle occurs in the waterlogged soil? Uh -huh. So you can see again, the nitrogen cycle keeps on coming. We've seen from the past the, uh, four papers we've looked at again. Again, the nitrogen cycle here is back again. Is it A, ammonification, B, denitrification, C, nitrification, and D, nitrogen fixation? 36. Where does the which process will occur in the waterlogged soil where we have too much water in the soil? Uh huh. Which process will occur? Yes, guys. Uh huh. Which process will occur in the waterlogged soil? Is it A, ammonification, B, denitrification, C, nitrification, or D, nitrogen fixation? Oh, very good. Yes, the correct answer here is Z, B denitrification right? so when there's too much water in the soil the denitrifying bacteria will break down in nitrates into nitrogen and oxygen so they use up the oxygen and give out nitrogen gas back into the atmosphere which will cause the soil to become what infertile altogether so that is what will occur when the soil is water that's why last time i was explaining to say when you're watering your garden don't flood your garden thinking that no let me water once and for all so that i don't come and water for two days otherwise you just have to water enough for the day so that plants do not become waterlogged otherwise the soil will become what in feta why so nitrification occurs when we are converting ammonia to nitrites to nitrates that is the ammonification which we looked at yesterday under party y where we asked to say identify a process why so today we are talking about waterlogged soil and waterlogged soil will undergo denitrification. Right? So that's why waterlogged soil become infertile. Next question is uh, 37. So 37 says the table below shows the oxygen level, numbers of plants and the of fish in rivers uh, flowing through four towns. So we have town A, town B, town C, town D. So which town is most likely to discharge the and a treated water sewage okay so in town a oxygen is high plants are few fish are many okay b oxygen is high plants are many fish are many okay c oxygen is low plants are few how together fish are few all right then d oxygen levels are low plants are many fish are few so which one is more likely to have a discharge of uh, untreated fuel, untreated waste? Yes, guys. Uh -huh. Yes. Where are we going to have untreated sewage? Uh huh. Question thirty-seven. So when we pump raw sewage into rivers or ponds the oxygen levels are going to reduce and that will end up killing the water the fish eh? so the fish will be few and oxygen levels will be low now due to the green sewage you find that it blocks plants from receiving so you're going to have a lot of algae growing at the surface where it becomes green so plants in the since they are not receiving light they will end up dying so that's why here the town which is discharging fuel is actually town c where there will be low oxygen fewer plants because the sewage will actually kill the what the plant same are we together then the fish are also going to be few due to the low amount of oxygen so since there is no oxygen the fish will end up what dying so the correct answer for question 37 is actually uh, C okay so we are not going to have many plants because what we we'll have is algae so algae are not plants they are actually their own class of organisms so even if algae appears green uh, we classify on their own so those appear under protozoas how to get all right okay 38 so 38 
here we have the genetic diagram shows a genetic cross between two plants so here we have a tall plant i hope we can see the words are a bit small and we also have a tall plant so these are the parents okay so the offspring you have tall you also have wu to you also have wu to and you have wu a dwarf okay so which of the following would be the genotypes of who the parents so what would be the genotypes of the parents now together is it a homozygous and homozygous or b homozygous to and d uh, homozygous short or c heterozygous to and heterozygous to or d heterozygous uh, homozygous to and heterozygous to which one do you think is the correct uh, genotype of uh, the parents okay yes guys oh excellent job guys yes the correct answer here is this c so this is a classic mendelian cross right they are even in your notes i think so when you cross a heterozygous store plant with a heterozygous store plant you are going to get a three to one knee ratio right? so whenever we cross heterozygous with heterozygous we get a three to one nine uh pure breed tall pure breed short or ob or twine then we have heterozygous store with the uh, pure breed uh, short you get one to one so those are the crosses you should be able to remember on our genetic quality crosses right? okay next question we have is question 39 okay so question 39 says a pure breeding black male right uh, mouse sorry so a pure breeding black uh, male mouse is mated with a brown mouse and they produce 12 offspring if the allele for black feather is Z dominant over the allele for brownie mouse what would be the possible distribution of the fair coat so we have who a pure breed the black one and the brown mass sign so what do you think will be the distribution so we have 12 offsprings of rats okay yes guys what would be the answer here have we done our genetic cross for 39 Okay. Let me just uh, ensure that my fo phone is a bit charged just, uh, for a moment so that we don't miss out anything so that the stream does not cut. Okay. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yes, guys, what is the correct answer? All right, excellent job yes the correct answer is actually d how to get so why is it d so when you see the word pure breed just know that this one is homozygous so pure breed will be homozygous so you are going to have b with a behind now since brown is recessive mean that here we are going to have small b and small behind remember i said when you uh, cross pure breed the tall and pure breed the short it's going to be auto so here since we have pure breed black and pure breed the brown we are going to get all black eye. So all black now doesn't matter because whether they are all males or all females, it's possible because the uh, sex determination is always 50%. It's possible you can have uh, 50 half boy, uh, half male, half female. Uh, so sex is actually so that's why it's here. Or you can end up having all females or all males. So the correct answer here was ZD. So don't let this part confuse you. When it comes to sex, when you come to children someone can end up having all males they can even have all females or they can have balanced the breeding is always 50 percent when it comes to sexy determination all right moving on to the next question we have question number 40. so question 40 says the family pedigree below shows the pattern of inheritance of a genetic disease caused by a sex linked gene okay so here the gene is sex linked time so key we have normal male which is a clear square shaded square is affected male this one is uh, ill uh, the circle which is clear it's normal female then the affected female has this shaded there so here we have uh, michael we have uh, sarah we have james we have kate we have susan so what's the conclusion can be drawn from the diagram 
okay so a both uh, males and females are carriers or b only females are carriers or c only males are carriers or d there are no carriers in the pedigree uh -huh. what conclusion can we draw guys uh -huh. question 40 this is the last one we end up with a bang so i hope here everyone at least here will be able to at least leave a comment at least i want to see all the answers here coming come on guys yes andrew you have stated your question very good uh-huh very good prudence you have stated your answer uh, loveness very good yes keep on keep them coming keep on coming guys so that uh, we end uh, this one now so that i know everyone at least uh, everyone drop drop your answer because this is the last uh, question yes mm -hmm. very good very good yes keep them coming very good yes so here the correct answer is a b only females are carriers out together so for example here we find that uh, most of the time we find that in most cases you are going to find that the sex linked uh, genes will normally affect uh, males altogether because here the mother is actually what uh, a carrier so there will be a carrier for the gene while the father will not have the gene so you find that here james married a female but all the children were okay so mean that the females here susan end up becoming a what uh, a carrier so when she married this one they end up having sons which are infected so you find that here that's why it mostly affects male children because females will normally be what uh, carriers in all right so this is what i had for us for this lesson thank you so much for watching guys so this was our revision paper for biology paper one for the year 2013 okay so tomorrow on monday we'll start looking at another paper if you'd like to join the class please uh, hit the link uh, in the chat so that you can join my class it's only 100 kwacha for the whole entire program so hopefully we'll be seeing you guys joining the class in case you have not yet joined uh, we hope at least we'll be able to see and work together so that we go through more papers so we are going through and even going into paper two so we are going to go all the way up to 2021 okay so make sure you take time if you're interested please join the group if you enjoyed this lesson make sure you give it a like uh, leave a comment in the comment section so that uh, i'm able to tell that you actually enjoyed uh, the lesson otherwise uh thank you so much guys for being here with me i really enjoyed your company so please uh let's keep it up and i really enjoyed the energy which you are giving in today's lesson especially in the comment section and all those answers you were providing great job to everyone and please uh, keep it up next time looking forward to seeing you again in class on a monday same time 20 hours all right so thank you so much once again and uh, bye for now i'll see you 